and welcome back to our Tuesday Spotlight. It is our day to be able to share with you some of our wonderful DTL Disciple Thought Leaders and our ambassador today, and also other people that we want to have you learn from so that you can move forward and more effectively share your message. I am laughing and Katrina, we have Katrina Siemens on today. We're so happy to have her and I'll tell you why we are cracking up. Katrina, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. I love it. I'm laughing because we both had quite the morning. We ended up, I had my little guy who ended up staying home and she had to get one of her kids from the dentist who's numb and get him back to school. And then we're like, oh, and now we're back. It's time to hop on. Here we go. <laughs> This is how we roll, people. This is just how it goes. And that's kind of what we want to talk about today is we get a lot of questions about what do I experience at a Disciple Thought Leader retreat? And what do you ladies do? Like I see a lot of things, Disciple Thought Leaders, and you're speaking at women's conferences, and you're writing things and, and doing books and publishing books, and you're doing all these things. Like, what is it? What is it that you're doing? So today we're going to answer some of those questions and particularly about our DTL retreat, which are an incredible life-changing experience to be sure. And so we're going to kind of go through that a little bit about what you can expect, what you experience, but we're going to do it with Sweet Katrina and her experience, just kind of a day in the life of how she came about this and what had, how she's been growing and developing through that. So first and foremost, let me give you the beautiful bio that you can know who she is and what she does. <laughs> Katrina Siemens is an inspirational speaker, coach, published writer, certified early childhood special educator, and Disciple Thought Leader Ambassador. We'll tell you a little bit more about that later. And a happily mother, a married mother of five. She is the founder of Deliberate Family, where she trains Latter-day Saint moms to be deliberate with their divinity to uplevel themselves, their homes, and their families. And her tools, resources, and routines are easy to use, and they're so, so good. And she has helped hundreds of families turn guilt and overwhelm into purpose and joy. She is passionate about making Christ a focus in her everyday life, while still enjoying temporal things like Disneyland, Pebble Ice, and Minky Blankets. So, so fun. And she does it so beautifully and with such joy and such reality. So when you and I connected, you already had these pieces of deliberate families. And that's really women that we are um, excited about working with are women all on the spectrum of they have five things that we are looking for and know that those are certain women. So they, they feel a rumble. Um, that the Lord wants them to do something more. They're all in for Christ. They have maybe a couple of pieces or a piece or writing a book or they're doing a podcast or they, they've done something or they want to speak or whatever. They've done some pieces, but they just don't have this sort of aligned plan that's Christ-centered and that gets traction. And then they're open to learning some new skills and understanding and they want to work with like-minded women. So skipping over that really fast, but that's kind of the certain women that we, we work with because we then take these certain women, help them find their purpose, and then fulfill it as an influential speaker, writer, and media presence for him. So Zam, got all that done. So this is Katrina. I'm catching you up to where she is. So this <laughs> connects with us. So let's just go back to that moment. What is it that drew you to the Disciple Thought Leadership way of doing things and to this whole realm? What is it that drew you to it? For sure. Hands down, the thing that drew me to this the most was the for him. That piece of like, we're doing this with the Lord. Like, where do we do business with him? And in our world, you just don't find that very much. And so that really like stuck out to me when I learned about the disciple thought leaders was that little piece. That was what I was looking for. Cause I had done a ton of things before I had been um, published in a magazine. I had started a podcast. I had, um, been on TV even, like somebody had invited me, Good Things Utah invited me to talk about my Dillard Family Christmas course. And I just, and I'd done coaching. I had done all sorts of things. And I just like felt like there was still some, I wasn't getting traction and I wasn't getting the speaking opportunities I wanted. And I wasn't feeling like I had the credibility. And I just thought, but where I, my message is all about being Christ. -like. So I can't just go to any business person to be able to share that message. And so when I learned about you and I learned about DTL and I learned about what it was all about and that for him piece was just like, wow. And then as I went to the retreat and I joined the um, Disciple Thought Leader circle, it has really become such a powerful thing in my business. Um, being able to treat the Lord as my CEO and being able to really partner with him to share this message of being a deliberate family. 
Oh, I love that. And I love that that's what drew you because that is such a connector. I talk with the other women about it's so amazing that you have all of these amazing, stellar, wonderful women who none of them think they're that amazing or stellar. It's so funny. Every time we have our welcome calls for the retreat, we all get together on the Zoom and stuff. And afterwards, I'll have these texts from women saying, I don't know if I'm going to be able to be good enough to be with these other women. And the other women are saying the same thing about these women. They're all like, you know, but they're all stellar because they, they want to do it for him. But what we found that is amazing is we don't have this drama. We just don't have drama. And when you get a lot of women that are moving forward, they're independent things, you can have a lot of drama. It, it's a, just a ripe recipe for it. But what we found is that because everyone's focused on for him, then there's this lateral support of how can I help you? What can I do? And, and let's get creative how we can help move you forward because everything we do is for him. So I love that that stood out to you. Absolutely. And even being to multiple retreats now, I mean, you feel that same spirit in every single retreat and it is powerful and it is amazing because it's true. There can be a lot of drama when you get a lot of women together, but when we're all united in this for him purpose and this, um, this Christ centered focus on what we're each individually doing, then we can each individually support and be excited for each other. And then also be compassionate and empathetic for each other as well through the hard things. And it's an amazing thing to feel. Yes. And now let's talk about that for a minute. So you come in, you start connecting with these when you come to the retreat and we go through what we call the four M's. So it's mindset, mission, message, and marketing. And we do it all in three days and it's all doctrinally based. We do it through scripture. I mean, even the marketing is the Alma way, the Ammon way, you know, that kind of thing. And we follow a lot of what the savior does, how we watch him prepare people to receive the message, to be transformed by it. And that's really the focus that we go through. So was there anything that when you came to the retreat that stood out to you that was either unexpected or that was something you're like, oh, that was so helpful for me that I, I hadn't maybe seen before or that I didn't anticipate I would experience or enjoy? I think, I don't know, the whole thing? <laughs> Um, well, but really what I remember standing out so much to me was just, uh, the ability to, uh, be so vulnerable and so forward in a safe way and to be safe in that environment and to, um, transform your mindset. I, I'm a huge mindset, um, fan. Like I love teaching people, if you can change your mindset, you can change the thoughts in your head, you can do anything. And sometimes it's our minds that are stopping us. And so when we focus first on mindset, it is just life changing. It helps us get into the right mode so that then we can talk about our mission being for Christ. And then we can talk about the specific message and all the little pieces that go into that, who our audience is and everything. And then we can learn how to market it and not do it for the money, but to do it for him. Like we still have that mindset and that mission in place and that solid foundation. And so I remember at my retreat, just feeling very uh, vulnerable at the beginning and kind of like easing in. I'm somebody who kind of likes to observe first and kind of let other people talk first. And I, by the end, within three days, it was like, oh, light bulbs went on and oh, this could look like this, and this could look like this, and this person had this idea, and I brainstormed, and there's coaching that's going on, and it just, the whole package just makes it go, you're here, and now you're here. Like, you just are be able to start on that, like, springboard you into that transformation process, and it's a really cool experience. I love that. And it's so one of my favorite parts of the retreat, I absolutely agree, is seeing women come in and then Often what we see is just like within the first hour or two, women are chatting and talking, they're connecting, and then the breakthroughs start happening because it is such a safe space and the different ways that we go about it, women are able to open up. We've had women who they've had emotional or different kinds of abuse that have happened to them and they've been able to break through things, things that some of the ladies have said, I've been trying to deal with this for like 15 years. This is one of the last retreats that we just did, a lady said, I just broke through something that have I've been dealing with for, I don't know, 20 years or something. It was just like this crazy, amazing thing. And we watch this just pop. And sometimes it's about motherhood. And sometimes it's about business stuff. And sometimes it's about what uh, the Lord can see me doing and breaking through those self-limiting barriers. But it shifts people in these incredibly 
deep, like deep in depth and breadth ways. And I'm trying to think of the word, but just those ways. Yeah. And, and it's often we, I, I remember watching some women who have been like, I didn't know that was even standing in my way at that point. Right. Like these things come out sometimes where they are, they realize, huh, that surprised me that that came up, but wow, I can feel, I feel so free now. I feel so light because all of a sudden I have undug some of the layers that I've been holding on to for a long time. So true. In fact, I think of different women. I think of Jen, Jen Brewer, who was like, what am I even doing here? I have some, I have a child that's struggling at home and she flew in and all these things. And by the end, she had a breakthrough. She had someone right there at the, in the circle who gave her, was a therapist actually, but was attending and gave her the things that she needed to be able to go home and help her son, which was amazing. And Wendy, Wendy Jones, who was like curled up on the couch and saying, stop talking about social media. I don't want to do it. You know, and then within six months, well, three months, she was teaching social media. And then within six months, she had her first retreat of her own 22 people. And now she has a team and she has national sponsors and she, all of us keeping family first, but being that mom and of finding these tools, using these tools to get that tool belt to be able to life hack the process so that we can do both and still stay focused on family first. I love this. So as we talk about this retreat, you know, you're, you can get the sense that you're learning mindset. You're learning how to clarify your mission. You're learning how to step up and speak up. And that's one of my favorite parts was the speaking because we teach you how to create a keynote and then actually start speaking it in the speaking showcase. Is there anything that stood out to you with the retreats that you've attended or your retreat that you were at of watching these women or even yourself of being able to speak and speak better? Oh, it's, it's so fun. Really. It, I, I, there are so many women who come and they are like, Oh, I don't know if I want to do that, you know, but then they do it and they rock it. And it's just like, wow. And I just love the mini keynote that we teach them how to put it together. And it's just so simple. It's just this template, this format, and they can just fill in their things and then they're ready to go. And that's what we need as mom ands, right? We need to be able to just like, okay, hey, I've got the tools. I know how to pull it out and I know how to whip it up. And then here we go. And we're gonna put our faith in the Lord to make it happen because faith in the Lord and faith in ourselves. And then when we have that combination, we just see there the transformation happen. We see people who I remember watching, oh, I can't remember who it was, but like, feeling so nervous and so shy and so weird at the beginning. And then she just took the stage and she took her presence and she stood in it. And it's just so cool to see people just step into that light and be able to just own it. So, oh my gosh, it fills me with so much joy. Just even talking about this. Cause I think about president Nelson, where he tells us in a plea to my sisters, we need women who can step up and speak up and teach fearlessly. Right. And I think that's one of my favorite parts of the retreat is that as we take them through this process, tap into things that they can do and become that they've never recognized that they could. And they're doing it, like you said, right there. I remember one of the um, retreat participants, uh, Ashley, she had her mom come to one. And she once her mom was at the retreat, she turns to me quietly and privately and says, my mom doesn't know she's going to speak because if she knew that, she wouldn't come. And I was like... Like, oh my gosh. So we just guided her and guided her, this cute mom who was adorable and deathly afraid. She was like shaking like this. And turns out she rocked it. And guess what? She left the retreat Saturday evening, Sunday. She had to go for her calling. She had to go to 11 wards and share about this thing that was going on. And she said, I went and I spoke to 11 wards and I did it. I stood and delivered in my face. And it was so exciting. So seeing these women take these skills and use them in anything that they need in daily life, it really helps them. And I've noticed just even my daughter has started her own business and she just came to me this morning. She's like, I could not do this without you because of the skills that I've learned in teaching women these skills I'm teaching my girls and they, and she's had her first client. It's been so exciting, but them being able to learn these skills as well, temporally and spiritually. Have you seen as far as for this experience of you going through this, have you seen any skills or traits that you have developed that have helped you in some particular way as far as coming into the DTL, the retreat, or the DTLC, that some skills or, or things that you've been like, oh, I'm so glad I know how to do that. That was something I've learned how to do. 
Yeah, I, I would say my uh, probably the biggest skill that I've seen in transformation in myself has been the ability to have the confidence in myself that because I have these tools, I am so much more confident to say, I know what I'm doing. I got this. And, um, and being able to just have, when you have that confidence, you can use the tool belt even better, right? Like you can pull out when I have to do a sacrament meeting talk, I can, oh, okay, I know how to write a talk and I know how to put these things in and make it flow. Um, with the speaking track within the Disciple Thought Leader Circle, we do a lot of practice and a lot of, and with any thing you practice more than you're going to get better at it. Right. And so now it's easier to stand and deliver something and to do it because I've seen myself speak. I've, I've gone through the process of, um, bettering every little thing, right? Like not being nitpicky, but then also saying, I don't like how that is. I want it this way. And being able to own that, being able to say, I want it to be this way and I don't want it to be this way. This is how I want this message to come across. This is how I don't want to come across. And those kinds of particular things, it all started from that first speaking showcase at the at the retreat where we stand up and we give a little bit of our message that we've been working on for two days and um, and it just starts from there. You have to start somewhere, you know, and you, the first one might be feeling like I'm super intimidated, but after you keep going and practicing and get these skills even more honed down, then you learn line upon line. That's how the Lord has it. And then you can do anything that you want to do. It's awesome. It's so true. And seeing that shift that I can stand, I can speak. And that's so much of the women that we meet are, they're feeling this this rumble to do something more and to share a message more effectively, whether it's writing it or speaking it or whatever. And they're like, I just don't know where to go to, to get the, or, or to get the tools. And we're like, we got the tools and we can life hack it for you because you're a mom. And most of the time women and, and, and you don't have a lot of time. So we're going to do this down and dirty and get you set. And the, the joy that they experience when they see that breakthrough, when they see they can do it, when it's not so intimidating and they go, okay, God's got me, I can do this and then replicate it and replicate it and then up level it. So joyful. Let's talk for a quick second about the women. How has the, the experience of doing this with like-minded covenant keeping women, how has that been for you? How has that shifted you or blessed you or benefited you? Oh, it's been more than I could ever imagine and amazing um, to be able to be surrounded by women who are also all in for Christ and to be surrounded by, have a support system of people who also are going through the failures and the wins and going like this all the time, right? Um, and to be able to make friends. Like I was thinking about my retreat earlier this morning and I thought, you know, my biggest takeaway was the instant group of friends that I had after three days. Like the the connections that we made and the um, <clears throat> things that we shared with each other, and then we could just hold on to those connections and just keep on going. And it has, it it wasn't what I was expecting to get out of the retreat. You know, I was there for business. I was there to like figure out my message and to figure out how to speak and figure out how to get the gigs. And yet one of the biggest, biggest blessings of the retreat for my life was the support system I got out of it and the friendships I got out of it and the, the people who, and it's, and you know, it's funny that that surprised me because I'm all about the people. Like I'm like, oh, checklist. No, thank you. Like the people are what matter. And I think that it, that is, so true when we come to these retreats is the people are the you know we see the lord come and bring certain people together and now that i've gone to multiple retreats um it is amazing to see the kinds of people he brings together to each retreat each one is so different and yet those people need each other and he is so a part of this and it's awesome Oh my gosh. And we have seen that over and over. We are approaching our 10th retreat. Is it 10th? Yep. Yeah. In two years. And we have seen a different feel to different retreats. And one, we had just almost 80% of the women that attended had been through deep trauma. And we've had no other retreat that has been like that. But because they all had sort of gravitated to this retreat, didn't know each other, that we were able to shift the way we did it and the pace that we did it 
They got everything they needed, but the way we went about it, we were prayerful. I remember going to bed that night and like, Heavenly Father, what do I do? We need to do this differently. So we'll help us see what we need to do. And it was incredible. It was exactly what they needed. And the next morning we had all these breakthroughs and it was incredible. And so we approached this in such a sacred way for this sacred space that we feel we take it seriously of preparing this environment with everything we can possibly think of for their benefit to be able to go deep fast and make those connections and get that learning and shift that mindset. It is truly incredible. And I love the fact that, I love that you brought up that these friendships last. We've seen people from two years ago, they're still, we call them the OGs, and they are still, they're hanging out. We see them, we'll go to the temple together, fly into each other's events. They're, they're still super connected and they're lifeline with each other because we're talking about the same la the lingua franca, right? It's the same <laughs> language that we have that, we talk about God and for him and family first, but how do we do a lot at landing page and how do I do my opt-in? And we have all of this language that's going, but we all know the purpose-driven way we're going about it. I yeah. love this so much. A couple of quick more questions, but one really quick thing. There's a lot that you learn, a lot of things that are business things and technical things and, and the how-to things and then the friendship things and all these things. And you have moved rapidly. You've been open, you've been a sponge, you've learned and you still roll with the family. And then you have been able to have these opportunities, speaking, now speaking for women's conference and co-hosting a, a retreat and then hosting a retreat as a DTLA, which is DTL ambassador, meaning you go out and you help women find their purpose and then lead them to the retreats and want to teach them the same things that you have learned. So if you could look back over this experience, you've just gone boom, 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 and kept elevating and elevating. How... How has this experience in such a relatively short period of time, how has this changed you in, in significant ways? Is there something that comes to mind, an experience or a description or something that you feel like this has changed me? Um, well, like I said earlier, I mean, I've, I've learned more how to own the things I do and own the things that I am and bring those things forward, bring those things out of the darkness and into the light. And um, I, as I had went to the retreat and it was like, okay, I got a little taste of like what this could look like with feeling safe with these women and being able to like talk about entrepreneurship and the Lord at the same time. And then I joined the, the, the circle where those friendships just grew even more. And I got to know, have more tools and I got to practice speaking and I got to know how to get the gigs and know how to, um, how to d do, um, d more business things. And then joining the ambassadors, makes it so that then you get to teach what you're learning and you get to train, help train women to be able to do the things that I've already experienced doing and being able to run, help to be the co host and the director of these retreats has been amazing. Um, I, it just has been something that I would have never started by myself, but I have really enjoyed it. And it was like, oh, this is something that I really enjoy doing. This is like a zone of genius, right? Like this is something that really brings me energy and brings me joy to do. And I never would have been able to do that before without this. And I think that the Lord knew that when he first was like, hey, check out Connie, check out the DTL. There might be something here you want to do, you know? And that, um, and the, so being able to just learn all these things and then to see the transformation. I remember sitting at a retreat. Oh, it must've been my retreat. And I was, it was near the end. We were kind of getting done doing closing circle. And I remember the spirit kind of going, you could be a part of helping these women transform. And I was like, Okay, and I got a little glimpse of one of the women there and she had really just had her breakthrough moment and she had just, the light bulb went on for her. And I remember the joy I felt there and I thought, yeah, I wanna do that more. Like it it was just this quiet little prompting and whispering to the, that the Lord was just giving me this little tender mercy. Hey, there's something more here that you can't quite see everything. And so now, I mean, really my retreat was in June. So it's only been nine months and it, I'm a whole different person. 
I just don't even know how to tell you all the things that have changed one line upon line and little step by little step, but the Lord knows what's going on. And he knows how um, the struggles and the wins and all of it just change us to be even that much better and be able to participate and partner with him to do this work. It's so true. And I've watched you. You were amazing, even when you came in and then just watch this flourishing. It's like this constant, um, you know, petals just keep opening and opening and opening. It is truly amazing. And we give that to the Lord because, sorry, because we can make our cute plans and we can do our, our planning together and all these cool things that we bring that definitely are so vital and important. But he is the one that has created this structure and, and led us on this journey to help other women. There's no way we could have so many amazing breakthroughs in three days like we do. And with moms who have all these things, that again, women don't have to be a mom to come, but with all of us having so many things and responsibilities and stresses and yet connect so fast and up level so quickly, it's, it's stunning every single time. And it's so personal. I, I just want to put that in there too. Like all these women have these breakthroughs when they come, but they don't happen at the same time. And it's so personal, even though there is a big group of people and there is, you know, we try to keep it smaller in numbers to be the intimate connections. But even with a lot of people around, it's so personal on your own journey. And it's like with you and the Lord, like that is the thing that matters here. And he's going to tell you things and he whispers things to you that nobody else can hear. And it just is an amazing experience. I love that. I think that's, I know our time is, is wrapping up, but I think that's one of the most phenomenal things. And it's funny to me that, you know, if you're listening and women are thinking, oh, this sounds so amazing, but I don't know if that could be for me or if I could be that amazing. The Lord takes us everyday women who are extraordinary souls and we don't even know it, we don't see it. And he gives us this opportunity to connect and combine. And that just makes that catalyst of this incredibleness that just comes out in, for, with everyone, that they leave with this whole different shift in life that keeps going, that it's on a new track now. And I, I thought to, I just had a call this morning with someone and they the thing that I hear most often when I do a call, and if you want to know more, you can do a discovery call. I do them free. We just see where you're at. We say, this is what it, it is, and this is what it may be, and, and this might be the next best step, best step, or maybe it's not. And we're very honest about it. We'll give you our best thoughts about where you are and where you want to be, and do we help you get there? And I was talking with her this morning, and she said, I, I can feel it. I can feel the Lord's prepared me, but I am excited. I'm excited and I'm scared. I'm like, then you're spot on because those are the two feelings that the women always have. I'm excited and scared. A little bit of that into the woods thing. And I, I, I said this to this woman this morning and I could feel it. And I said, I encourage you to be prayerful with the Lord, but I want you to imagine being at that chasm and that Indiana Jones step. And just what if you took that step? The Lord's already prepared a path. And I think about what if you don't. And we talked about that. What if? What if I did take the step? How does that feel? And what if I didn't? And it made me think of that story with Sherry Dew, where she wanted to try out for the team and she was going to go and she was going to do the tryouts. But she saw everybody else and she was like, they're super good and I'm not that good. Walked around and then just went home. And then found out later that that was the only year that there was an open spot, only year on the team. And she said, the Lord had prepared a place for me. And I just didn't believe it. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't go with it. I didn't take the step. And I think that's the important thing is being able to say to yourself, if I'm feeling a rumble and I know I want to do something more and I feel drawn to this, I'm going to find out more. I'm going to take a step and find out more because it will shift your life if it is for you. And this is the right timing for you. We've watched it over and over and over every single retreat. It's changed their lives. It's changed our lives every single time. So if there's someone out there who's like, I oh, don't no, know, I'm thinking from your genuine, honest perspective. And like I said, we are not here to try to make people come. We are just finding a fit, like making a match. Like who is it that needs this, that needs what we have? What would you say to a woman that's kind of struggling with that? I'm excited and scared and I don't know. I would say take one step at a time. 
right? Like go find out more, come schedule a, a discovery call. Connie's not scary, it's all good. And Connie's super transparent and she's super, super happy all the time. Like she's just a joy to work with. And you know, one step is all it takes. And I know people who've done discovery calls and it hasn't been the right thing right then. But then a year later they come back and they're like, okay, now it's time, you know, and, and, but it, it helps propel you forward. Right. And the Lord works that way. He's like, I'm not in a hurry, but we can do something if you want to do it. And so it's like he, by you even just taking a step to, in one direction, it's showing him that you're like, okay, I'm serious about this. Like, I really do want this. And then I'm okay if I, you know, there's, there's no hurry, but I'm going to take one step at a time. And actually I'll even just throw in there as you take one step, it's easier to take the next step and it's easier to take the next step. Like it snowballs and it's just, you get that much more confident with each step. And it's just really cool to see what could happen. Oh my gosh. You are so spot on. And to know what the Lord has prepared for you, if you're willing to go and just take that first, first step. I love it. Katrina, this is such a fun thing. She is our retreat director for our next one. So check it out on our website, connysocal.com slash retreat. And you can see, we only do four a year. We have one coming up super fast. And then we have um, <laughs> others coming up and you can just see when those times and dates are. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and do a discovery call with us. We'd love to chat and just let you know more about it if you're interested. Katrina, thank you so much. This has been pure thank joy. You. Yep. Love you. And if you love these, go back to the other Tuesdays and see the things that we've been teaching you, whether it's cooking wholesome food or whether it's getting your message out more effectively. We've got tons of people that we've interviewed who are giving you takeaway tips so that you can be able to move forward in sharing your message more effectively for him. See you next time.